Hello, everyone. My name is Li Nan Xinjin. It gives me great pleasure to present our paper at SysTor, Fantastic SAT Internals and How to Learn and Use Them. This paper presents a comprehensive study on learning, understanding, and utilizing SAT internal properties, which includes a probing tool that can extract as many as 10 properties, a revelation of many interesting and unique findings, and examples that demonstrate how to leverage the knowledge for better I.O. performance. This is a joint effort with my colleagues Hao Minzhe, Li Huaicheng, and Professor Hayati Gunabi from the University of Chicago, and our collaborators Lin Xin and Tim Emami from NetApp. Despite the global impact of the pandemic, the SSD market is still growing at an average annual rate of 15%. Their competitive performance, reliability, and cost to capacity ratio have made them the cornerstone of modern storage systems. However, they pose a very unique threat. Many of them are black box devices with their internal architecture hidden from their users. The complexities of SSDs often make them seem like an operating system. Here's a simplified illustration of a typical SSD internal architecture. Many internal components and activities consist of an SSD device. These include buffer flushing, garbage collection, logical to physical address mapping, IO contention at multiple levels, IO alignment, and many others. These internal complexities all have a great impact on the SSD's overall performance. But with them being hidden inside this black box, SSD users often see performance irregularities that are hard to explain. The most notorious irregularity is the long tail. SSDs have good read latency, often at the level of tens of microseconds, but with internal activities like garbage collection and buffer flushing, the latency can easily rise to several milliseconds or even hundreds of milliseconds. Other irregularities include unpredictable latencies even under balanced workloads and possibly significant alignment overhead when read sizes are not aligned to the SSD's page size. We believe that without a deeper understanding of SSD's internals, it is difficult to address these issues and fully utilize the performance potential of these powerful but mysterious devices. With that, we introduce a comprehensive study on learning, understanding, and leveraging SSD internals, which includes three parts. Queenie is a probing tool that extracts as many as 10 SSD internal properties by using only the latencies observable at the application level. Kelpie is the analysis results of running Queenie on 21 different SSD models from seven major vendors. The results include an extensive report of general findings and trends, as well as six major findings that we deem both interesting and unique. New is a set of IO optimization examples to demonstrate how the IO stack can leverage the learned knowledge to achieve better performance. As an interesting note, the naming of our paper is adopted from the movie series, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which portrays a wisdom world. Queenie is a character who can read other people's minds. Kelby is a shape-shifting creature that can take any form, representing many forms of the SD internals. And Neil is the main character of the series. Neil is a scholar who studies those fantastic beasts and helps solve crimes in the wizarding world. To design the probing tool Queenie, we pick 10 properties to model an SED's internal architecture. These properties are mostly for understanding SED's IO parallelism and buffer mechanisms, which are the two main characteristics of SED performance. To probe and extract these 10 properties, Queenie takes the simple approach of observing the latency distribution of a carefully designed IO workload to speculate the value of the property. To the best of our knowledge, Queenie covers more SSD properties than prior work. And by using only the latencies observable at the application level, Queenie does not require special software or hardware and can be applied to any block device SSDs. By running Queenie on 21 different SSD models from
from seven major SD manufacturers, we're able to collect a raw data set of 10 gigabytes. These SSD models range from 2008 to 2018, covering consumer level SATA drives, the enterprise level and VME drives. By further analyzing the data set, KLB reports six major findings that are considered interesting, unique, and even counterintuitive with a revelation of many general findings and trends. And here is a table snapshot from our paper that summarizes all findings in KLB. And finally, New uses two case studies to demonstrate how the IELTS stack can leverage the knowledge learned in KLP to achieve better performance in real world scenarios. For the rest of my talk, I will first briefly talk about the term properties and how Queenie's probing technique works. Next, I will introduce one major finding in KLP and how New leverages this finding to design solutions for better performance. The term properties covered by Queenie are shown on the right. We pick the term properties based on three aspects. The first aspect is the basic building blocks of an SSD, such as the page size, which is a minimal read and write unit inside the SSD, and the NAND cell type, such as SLC, MLC, and TLC. The second aspect is IO parallelism, such as the number of channels and the number of flash chips inside each channel. These properties define how many IOs the SSD can serve concurrently. The third aspect is buffer management, which includes the read and write buffer size and the internal flush window, which we will explain in detail later. Now let us talk about Queenie's probing technique. We believe that latency values of individual IOs can be considered indications of SSD internal activities, and such information hints at the related properties. For example, High latency for a group of IOs may be due to activities like buffer flushing, garbage collection, or heavy contention at the chip level. So for each property, Queenie designs a special workflow that isolates a specific internal activity relevant to this property. For example, if we want to probe the right buffer size, then we need a workload that only triggers buffer flush. Then Queenie issues this workload to the SSD and collect the latencies to observe how the SSD reacts to the special workload. And finally, Queenie analyzes the latency distribution to speculate the value of the property. With this approach, Queenie does not require any special software or hardware because Queenie issues IO workloads and measures the latencies just like any other application level user of the SSD, meaning that Queenie is generally applicable to any block level SSD. Now, let us use white buffer size as an example. To probe this property, Queenie uses an intensive sequential write workload to isolate buffer flush activities and to minimize the involvement of other activities, especially garbage collection. Queenie first fully erases the entire SSD so that the sequential write workload does not overwrite any existing data. Queenie then issues this workload to the SSD and observes latency spikes, which are considered an indication of buffer flush activities. We show a figure here to visualize this process. On the x-axis is the progress of the sequential write workload, denoted as the amount of data written in megabytes since the beginning of the workload. On the y-axis are the latencies of the individual IOs in milliseconds. As we can see, for this particular SSD, the regular latency for write is only 30 microseconds. This latency reflects that this write is absorbed by the SSD's write buffer. Then periodically, we will see a latency spike that is on the level of 1.5 milliseconds. This number reflects a typical value of SSD programming latency, which indicates that data in the buffer is flushed to the underlying flash cells. By analyzing this latency distribution, Queenie discovers that the interval between two neighboring latency spikes is consistently 11.5 megabytes. So Queenie concludes that this SSD performs a buffer flush activity for every 11.5 megabytes of write data. In other words, this SSD has a write buffer size of 11.5 megabytes. 
If you're interested, please read our paper for a full discussion of the definitions, the advantages, and the probing methods of the term properties. And on top of these, Queenie's probing and analyzing process is also automated by using a clustering algorithm. Next, I will talk about one interesting finding from Kelpie. And later, I will show how Newt leverages this finding for better performance. This finding is called idle time buffer flush. As we've seen, intensive user writes usually trigger a buffer flush when the buffer is full. We call this externally triggered buffer flush. We discovered that some SD models are able to softly flush the buffer when the white workload is not so intensive. We call this internally triggered buffer flush. We further discovered that this internal buffer flush causes less IO contention. This finding gives us another useful SSD property, which is the internal flush window. We define an SSD's internal flush window as the time it needs to softly empty its write buffer. The probing method for internal flush window is based on the probing method for the write buffer size. Here, we use another SSD with 64 megabytes of write buffer as an example. So as shown in this figure, with an intensive sequential write workflow, we can see a latency spike of 1.5 milliseconds between two batches of 64 megabytes of write data. The idea for probing the internal flush window is to simply sparsify the sequential write workload by injecting idle time between writes. And we should be able to see the latency spike gradually disappears as we increase the idle time. Now let's restart the pro probing process to see how this works. So for the first batch of 64 megabytes, we don't inject idle time. Then the latency spike is going to be on the level of 1.5 milliseconds, just like those in the previous figure. For the second batch, as we inject 0.2 seconds of idle time, we can see that the latency spike decreases to 1.1 milliseconds. For the third batch with 0.5 seconds of idle time, the spike further decreases to 0.7 milliseconds. For the fourth batch, as we inject 0.75 seconds of idle time, the spike becomes very close to the latency of a normal write. And finally, as we increase the idle time to one second, the fifth batch sees no latency spike. This concludes that this is this internal flush window is one second, meaning that it is able to softly empty its write buffer in a second. Another way to think about this is that this SD has an internal flush speed of 64 megabytes per second, meaning that this SD's internal flush is capable of consuming write workload at a rate as high as 64 megabytes per second without triggering a full buffer flush. The complete report of Kelpie includes many other unique findings, some of it which are even counterintuitive. For example, some SDs have favorable sizes on reads. Rebuffer is no longer a prevalent design choice. Some SDs unexpectedly produce higher latency when the workload is lighter. And some SDs unnecessarily serialize concurrent writes. Kelpie also includes a long revelation of many general findings and trends summarized from probing the 21 SD models. Please read the paper if interested. Finally, let us talk about new to see how we can leverage the knowledge learned from the previous slides to achieve better iron performance. So to quickly recap, we discovered that an SD can have two kinds of buffer flush. The first kind is called external flush, which is triggered externally when the buffer is filled up. External flush causes heavy contention that impacts both read and write, since it usually occupies some flash chips for programming cycle and blocks other operations. The second kind is called internal flush, which is triggered internally when the write workload is not so intensive. This type of buffer flush causes less contention 
as we have seen from the figures that it produces much lower latency spikes. To exploit internal buffer flush, we designed the rate limiting shame layer that, can, that serves as another buffer layer in between the application and the underlying SSD. The main idea is that the shame layer can delay writes when the intensity of the workload is beyond what SSD's internal flush speed can handle. In other words, the shame layer tries to smooth out bursty writes to keep them below the rate of the SSD's internal flush speed. So here is a simplified visualization. First of all, the shame layer actively monitors the incoming write intensity. If the incoming write intensity is not greater than the SSD's internal flush speed, it means that the SSD should be perfectly comfortable handling the workload. Then the shame layer does not need to do anything and the application can get good latencies. Otherwise, if the shame layer sees that the incoming write intensity is greater than the internal flush speed, it temporarily holds the incoming writes in its buffer and then gradually releases them so that the SSD is not overly stressed. And as a result, the application can also get good latencies because much of the IO contention inside SSD is eased by the shame layer. To evaluate the shame layer design, we use the large company's search engine trace that is very write intensive with 83% of the trace being write workload. We first evaluate the baseline where writes are simply released to the SSD as they come. And here is the CDF figure for the baseline. On the X axis is the latency for read and on the Y axis is the percentile. Curves closer to the top left indicate better performance. As we can see, the baseline exhibits a long tail behavior. The 95th percentile is around 1.2 milliseconds, and the 99th percentile is around 3.4 milliseconds. In contrast, when we apply the shame layer, the CDF curve shows a much better tail behavior. The 95th percentile is 58% lower than the baseline. And the 99th percentile is only slightly higher than the 95th percentile and 82% lower than the baseline. To summarize, the right buffer knowledge we learned from Queenie and Kaupi gives us a better understanding of the SSD's capability and exposes more optimization space by utilizing the internal buffer flush for less IO contention. Newt has more evaluation figures for the shame layer. For example, we evaluated more real world traces on more SSDs. We also evaluated how much data the shame layer needs to delay. Newt also has another example of IO optimization by, sim by simply aligning resizes to achieve better performance. Please see the paper if you're interested. So to conclude, our paper presents a comprehensive study on learning, understanding, and utilizing SSD internal properties. By using an application level probing tool, we're able to discover many interesting and unique findings regarding the mysterious SSD internals. And more importantly, these findings expose substantial optimization space for achieving better IO performance. This is the end of my talk. Thanks for listening.